Who have you become? When did you get here? How did you get here? It started with one moment, maybe one thought, one act, one wrong turn can lead to a lifetime of regret. And who did you turn to? And where did they lead you? You see, sometimes decisions made in the moment without the right direction, without the right foundation, without hope for tomorrow, without a second thought about your salvation could be your last. In this life, we'll all have our faith tested. We'll all have our moments of doubt. And we'll sometimes waver. And surely, pain and suffering will find us and give us cause for fear. But remember, through Him, we've been given the chance, the chance to trust, and the chance to forgive, the chance to live, and the chance to love, perhaps even the chance to heal. Remember, choose Jesus and receive through Him the victory. Jesus now more than ever. Greetings, beloved. Welcome to the Jesus Now More Than Ever Gospel Series. We know you come searching for a blessing, in need of deliverance, and to witness the power of God. I can assure you that you're at the right place. Stay in position. Don't move. Enjoy and wait and relax as God has something marvelous to reveal to you right now. Jesus is ready to deliver someone now more than ever. Stay tuned. Stay in position. God bless you richly. Jesus now. Jesus now. Jesus now. Jesus now. Jesus now. Jesus now. Jesus now more than ever. Uchesu manje guna gala gospel series. Jesus now more than ever. Jesus now more than ever. I need Jesus now more than ever. You know why? Because he is worthy to be praised. And it's another Monday, Anuka. And all I can say is hallelujah. Jesus now more than ever. He won the victory for us. He won the victory for you. He is an amazing God. Hallelujah to his name. now. Oh, 
Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. I'm sorry. I want to sing that one more time. Sing it, blessed. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. A strong tower, the righteous, the righteous run into it. And what they say, that's what happened. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it. And they all right, this feels a little slow. Speed it up for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Is he worthy to be praised? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. What's his name? The name of the Lord is. The name of the Lord is. A strong tower. Say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into and they are saved. His name is holy. His name is holy. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Worthy? Worthy is his name. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Most high. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Most high. Worthy is the name. Worthy is, is the name, name of the Lord, most high. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord, most high. Jesus, Jesus is the name of the Lord, most high. Jesus, is he a risen king? Is he a risen king? Is he dead? God is not dead, but he's alive. And we are going to sing together hymn 251. He lives. He lives. Do you serve a risen Savior? He is in the world today. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever man may say. I see his hands of mercy, I hear his voice of joy. And just a time, and just a time I need him, he's always there. Everybody now, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He what? He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives. Verse 2, in all, in all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of 
is appearing. Can you see it? It's coming at last. Everybody sing now. He lives. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to Rejoice, 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 rejoice. So oh, are you rejoicing? Lift up those lift hands. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ our King. The hope of all who seek Him. The help of all who find. No other is so loving. So good. So good and kind, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today, he walks with me and he and talks, he talks along me. life's narrow way, he lives everybody, he lives, he lives, salvation to your heart and if he lives in your heart let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah if he lives in your heart i'm sure you want to go one place where are you planning to go after you leave this place i know you plan to go home but there's another place we want to go to that place is where heaven where jesus is because we need him more than ever and so Okay, we're going to do hymn 422, Marching to Zion. Hymn 422, come we that love the Lord. Whoa! 
into Zion with all of us. Last evening, we kickstart with a wonderful experience. And this evening, it is going to be even better because we have the evangelist in the house. We have you, a wonderful audience in the sanctuary. And we have those of our faithful members and viewers on YouTube and on the Zoom platform. What an experience we are going to have this evening. And so we want you right now to start subscribing to the channel, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell everyone to sign on and hear the wonderful news because people need the Lord. And if ever they needed to know that they need Jesus now more than ever, it's right here at the Meadowvale Church, the Meadowvale Seventh-day Adventist Church, that we are taking this message. We welcome you this evening to join us for another exciting and soul-stirring evening as we present to you this evening's topic on the four important things that everyone needs to know. I want you to understand, my friends, that there's no better place than to join in with us here at Meadowvale. We have soul star and music, as you've heard this evening. We have quizzes, we have health tips, we have all types of giveaways ready for our team, ready for each participant, ready for each person who comes, and you never know what you'll win. We thank you for joining us this evening, and we'll hope you will have a catawampus time as we continue to celebrate, because if we ever need Jesus, it is now more than ever. Thank you so much for being a wonderful supporting audience and we want you to continue. Remember, click, share the link and invite your friends. At this time, we continue on the program and we're inviting you to stand wherever you are and join us in the theme song. God bless you. Jesus now more than ever.
stormy weather, all his children should get together, for we need Jesus now more than ever. He touched the lame man and started walking, he touched the dumb man and he started Lord, we recognize that your words are indeed true. Your words can be trusted. Your words are alive and well. And as we listen to the evangelist last night, we come to the realization that Jesus is in 66 books of the Bible. And tonight, Lord, we come to lift him up one more time. Tonight, Lord, we come to give him praise, honor, and glory for all he has done in our lives. He has kept us through another day and to preserve us tonight to come and to praise his name. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Tonight, Lord, we just ask your spirit to manifest itself in this place. We ask for a mighty outpouring upon our evangelist tonight, that as he proclaim the truth tonight, your words will go forth like a mighty conqueror, and hearts will come to know you as Savior and friend. We pray, Lord, that you will manifest your presence among your people tonight. We pray for a mighty outpouring. We pray one more time that you will take a life called from your altar and 
and touch his lips one more time. That is, he speak the truth, Lord. Art will cry out, I yield, I yield, and surrender to you forever. We thank you for putting this program together, a life-saving program. We pray tonight, mighty God, that will manifest your presence in this place, and we will go rejoicing, emerging from the experience, and crying that Jesus saves. We'll tell others that Jesus saved, and they too will come to know him. Bless those who are online. Bless those who are in the sanctuary tonight and give us a wonderful experience in Jesus' mighty name. Let the saints say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I have walked with a lot of books up here, and it's not because I'm particularly studious, but because I actually want to give away these books. And if you listened last night, Sister Crystal would have told you that we are doing giveaways every single night. So for this evening's giveaway, I want to see all our visitors because we have a very special gift for you. Visitors, do we have any visitors here tonight? Amen. Amen. Yes, one, two, three, four. All right, so for my visitors, if you don't have a Bible, can I see the hands of the visitors that don't have a Bible and would like a Bible? All right, so we have one visitor there that does not, two visitors. So the two visitors, three for a Bible. She has Great. All right, my visitor right here, you have a Bible. All right, so you would like a book. Let me look at a really good brother, Nib. I am going to give you a book titled Hope in the Midst of Chaos. Because what I realize, and as we all look around, as we all look around, we know that the world is very crazy and there's a lot of chaos happening. So I would like to give you this book to encourage you. Do you have a copy? Hope in the Midst of Chaos. The book is called Hope in the Midst of Chaos. I have a copy right here for you. And I also have gifts for those who invited visitors. Visitors, if somebody invited you, if somebody invited you, I'm going to ask you to stand. If you had somebody invited you, let me stand with the person who invited you. Amen. I also have books for those members of our church who would have invited a visitor. And what I want you to do, you can either keep the book for yourself or you can share it with someone else and invite them to come along. So, ushers, you can give each member a book. So now to my regular members, you would realize that if you invite someone to come out to this series, you will also get the benefit of a book. So I'm inviting you to invite a friend. As they will say, tell a friend to tell a friend. And so that you can also receive the blessing. And not just you, we don't want you to keep the blessings for yourself, but we want you to share it with your neighbors, share it with your friends, share it with your co-workers. So please continue to come out and please continue to invite a friend out. At this time, we will move right over to our quiz. Now for those who are here or you are watching online, I know you would have been listening to the, the sermon from yesterday. And our pastor was going through the Bible, and there are a couple of gems which came out. So at this time, we're going to distribute the quiz questions. If you don't have a piece of paper, you can raise your hand, and the ushers will give you a paper so that you can write your answers. And for those who are online, we have not left you out. There will be something placed in the chat so that you can fill it out as well. For those who are in the sanctuary, we ask that you write your first name and your last name. And if you don't want to write your full last name, at least write the initials. Because what we're going to do at the end of the series, we're going to tabulate 
and the person who has the most scores will get a special prize. Can I have the quiz questions on screen, please? All right, let's move over to the questions. So what you can do, just number them. You can number the questions. You don't have to write it out, just number the questions, and these are true or false. So all you need to do is write true or false. Let's go to the first question. Question one. The Bible was written over a period of 1,600 years by about 60 authors. True or false? The Bible was written over a period of 1,600 years by about 60 authors. True or false? Question two. Can move to question two? The book of Revelation was written approximately in 96 AD. The book of Revelation was written, in appro was written approximately in 96 AD. And our pastor would have gone through this last night. Number three. The Bible was written over the period 1500 BC to 160 AD. The Bible was written over the period 1500 BC to 160 AD. Question four. Reading the Bible occasionally will make your faith grow stronger. Reading the Bible occasionally will make your faith grow stronger. And finally, for question five, the theme of the Bible is that Satan had his angels and his angels will be destroyed eternally never to cause havoc again. Listen carefully. The theme of the Bible is that Satan and his angels will be destroyed eternally, never to cause havoc again. So those are your five true or false questions for today. For those who are in the sanctuary, you can give your papers back to the usher so that we can tabulate. For those who are online, we ask that you just submit via the Google Doc that you'll be filling it out. Thank you so much for joining us for our quiz and our giveaway, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's health feature is on exercise. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as physical or mental activity that you do to keep healthy and become stronger. In times like these, we need a savior. Jesus, our chief commander, bids us come for training. As Christian soldiers, we need to be fit and healthy and ready to march to Zion, we need to be fit and healthy and ready to go to the battlefield. No wimpy soldiers in this camp. He bids us take up our crosses and follow him. And some of us have so many heavy crosses. So weightlifting is a part of exercise also. Did you exercise over the weekend? Did you do some physical activity around the house? Any gardening, washing the car, raking the lawn? No? Well, if you did, thumbs up. By so doing, you will be burning calories and strengthening the heart muscles. Coming out of a lockdown situation due to COVID and its many different variants, many of us are left overweight and depressed. We tend to eat more calories than our body really need. This will be stored as fat in our bodies. Weight is so easy to go on, but it's so hard to come off. Did you know 
that 3,500 calories are equivalent to one pound of body mass. So let's start counting or reducing our fat intake. After eating a big meal for lunch or dinner, some of us are so, so tired or, or, or so, so uneasy to get up. Overeating, did you know that overeating is a sin? Sedentary lifestyle, watching TV, playing games on the computer, on the phone, this needs to be reduced. Let's get up, let's get active, play some games, skip a rope, play dandy shandy. Remember dandy shandy? Who can play dandy shandy in here? We need to teach the younger one what dandy shandy is all about. It burns a lot of calories. Let's let, let the kids ride a bike. Take away the phone, take away the games from them, and let's all get active as a family. So it's recommended that we do exercise at least three times a week. How many times a week? Three times a week. And at least 30 minutes per session, right? So my dear friend, you don't need to go to the gym. You don't need no very expensive machine, exercise machine to get fit or to lose weight. What you need is, number one, self-discipline. Number two, comfortable shoes. You don't, be, you don't want to be jogging and limping or after a good workout, your toes squeezing you or hurting or your foot bottom is sore, right? You need breathable garments, right? So when the body is working out, the body produces heat, the body needs to let go of the heat. So wear things like cotton fabric to get rid of the body heat. If you don't do this, chances are you might collapse. And we don't want anybody to collapse doing a, a, a regular walk or a little jogging. Okay? And lastly, you need a bottle of water. What you need? A bottle of water. And you're ready to go for your morning walk or your morning run. Here are some warnings for exercise. Warning number one. Consult your physician before undertaking any rigorous exercise. I've heard of people collapsing because they're leaving from a sedentary lifestyle and they start to run like Usain Bolt down the track. No, it's a gradual thing. So you just don't get up and do a sprint. You need to warm up, right? You need to warm up. But first of all, as I said, consult your physician and let, he tell, let him or her tell you if your heart can manage the stress. Go slowly at first, walking. Everybody can walk. I've seen with my own eyes a man, a neighbor, who suffered a stroke. And you know, when you suffer a stroke, half of you is limpy. And the man walked from a limp to very brisk walking until I, could, I couldn't keep up with the man. I couldn't keep up with this man who suffered a stroke. So walking is the best exercise for a stroke victim. And everybody, if that man who suffered the stroke can walk, you and I can walk. No, everybody in here should be able to walk. So start walking slowly at first, and then you gradually increase your momentum. And then when your body gets seasoned in this, you put a little pep in the step. You know what I mean? A little pep in the step, right, Sister Lawson? So you start walking briskier and briskier, just like the man who had the stroke. Um, when I was walking behind this stroke victim and couldn't keep up with him, when I eventually was side by side with him, I said, boy, this is a miracle. All right? So walking. Warning number two, don't walk in lonely areas by yourself, especially too early in the mornings. Walk in groups. Walk on busy streets, walk with your dog. Leave expensive items. You know, some of us have some phone that is very expensive and we set up ourselves. So leave the expensive items at home. You can walk at home. Do several laps in the driveway or around the house. Be assertive while walking on the road. All right, let me just go through quickly the benefits of exercise. 
it de-stresses. And as I said, we're coming out of COVID, so it helps to de-stress us, right? Number two, it detoxifies. So when you do exercise and sweat, you're getting rid of excess water, salt, and fat. Weight loss, it reduces your body mass, right? It improves your immune system, and we're now in COVID, so our immune system needs to be boosted by exercise. It strengthens your bones, strengthens your muscles, and it makes you feel good. So incorporate some exercise in your daily routine. Thank you. days of darkness without sunshine or sign to lead the way but a whisper of his voice softly called me to his arms of forever to stay he is my reason for living. He is the king of all kings. I long to be his possession. Oh, he is my The lightning and thunder After the last bell has rung I want to bow down before him And hear him say well done he is my reason for living. Oh, he is the king of all kings. I long to be his possession. Oh, he is my everything. After the lightning and thunder, after the last bell has rung, I want to bow down before him and hear him say, Well done. A reason for living. Oh, he is the king of all kings. I long to be his possession. Oh, he is my everything. be his possession. Oh, he is my everything. 
Good evening, brethren and friends and visitors. I am happy to be here this evening. This is the time in our program when we all can participate by the way of giving in support of the Jesus Now More Than Ever Gospel Series. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward at this time and I'm going to ask the church to bow your heads while we pray. Our great almighty God, we're thankful that you have allowed us to gather into your sanctuary to praise you and to worship you and to spread the name of Jesus more than ever in this time. Father, we pray that as we come with our offerings to give in support of this series, this series which will bring the message to those who need Jesus more than ever so that souls may be born for your kingdom or offering may be used effectively at this time in this series. May you bless us as we give. May we give cheerfully and bountifully so that your work may go on effectively. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The Lord chooses messengers to bring his message of warning, but also his message of hope to all who dwell on the earth. For this time, the Lord chooses or has chosen Pastor Melvin Francis to bring the message for this generation. And this evening's message is four questions everyone needs to answer. Tune your hearts. Don't go anywhere. The man of God, Melvin Francis, comes to us immediately hereafter. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. O oh soul, are you weary and troubled?
wonderful face tonight. If you look the things of her will grow strangely dim. Oh, praise God. In the light of His glory Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, what a God you are. Indeed, you sit high and look low. Your God, our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Tonight, we thank you that you have not lost your power, but God is still in control. We are happy to know that despite the trouble in the world, the people have hope. And tonight this hope is burning within us. And as we come in the virtual space, and as we come in the live space, I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will do a work within this place. Beat back the forces of evil, we pray. Keep the devil at bay. We have come to war. The battle is on. 
but our victory is sure. Touch the preacher, touch the people. May somebody cry tonight, truly, the Lord is God, and I am resolved to be fully on the Lord's side. Thank you for hearing and answering, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, beloved. Please be seated. Lovely, lovely singing. Thank you so much, praise team. We appreciate the ministry of music. Good evening, everybody. God is good. And all the time, if you're happy and you know it, say amen. And if you're on your way to heaven, say hallelujah. Indeed, we serve a great, big, wonderful God. Today has been a blessed day for many of us. And while you might not have had everything you, you, you had wanted, God has been good to you. And uh, it's just a joy to be in his presence. You know, this morning as I listened to the news, I realized that the world is on tenter hooks. Everybody is panicking, fearful from war, heavy bombardment, to strike and more threats of strike, to shortage of baby formula. And the panic continues. But our hope is in God. And the Advent people have nothing to fear. Lest we forget. I just want you to know that church. Lest we forget. So welcome one and all to this the second night of our series. And I'd like to extend a special welcome to our visitors online and in the congregation live here at church. If you are a visitor, please indicate by raising your hand if you're here in the sanctuary. Visitors or visiting friends. Thank you very much, my dear. God bless you. It's good to have you. And um, you were here last night as well? All right, this is your first night. And by the grace of God, I trust you will receive something before you leave tonight. I will ask um, Sister Donna and her wonderful team just to ensure. As a matter of fact, let me see the hands of all of our visiting friends. Please. Um, please stand. I'm just going to ask the ushers. We have some lovely gifts downstairs we will get them some of these thank you so much so have that done god bless you all thanks for coming those of you are in virtual space we want you to know that we really appreciate your presence as well we also have a lot of space here in church it's really a huge congregation and so we have space can hold everybody we have two more nights for this week, and then we'll meet on Sabbath again. And then the first week ends, and my co-preacher, our pastor RuPaul Livingston, will take the baton on Sunday night as we run together with the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. To our regular members, thank you. For coming. It is a joy to have you. And I want to at this time recognize the presence of my very good friend and colleague, Pastor Joel Jump. Now, Pastor Jump serves as the pastor for the Constant Spring and Whitehall Avenue District of Churches. A very dynamic man of God. He preached here uh, just about two weeks ago. And you felt the power of God as he spoke on behalf of God. So welcome, Pastor. It's a joy to have you. 
and uh, thank you so much for coming out here this evening. And Pastor Walton, it's also good to have you. And God bless you as you continue to support the cause. Tonight, four questions. Everyone needs to answer. Four questions. Everyone needs to answer. The first question is a question of origin. On the right answer to this question depends the trajectory or the answer to every other question. The question is posed this way. Where did I come from? If you can answer that question, then I challenge you that the answer to the other three questions become easy. So the first question is a question of origin. Sister Francis, where did I come from? The second question is a question of identity. Who am I? That is a question of identity. Who am I? The third question is a question of purpose. Why am I here? A question of purpose. Why am I here? And the fourth question is a question of destiny. Where am I going? Where am I going? So the first is a question of origin. Where did I come from? If we answer this question aright, then the answer to all other questions will fall in place. If we can't answer, where did I come from? Then we can't truly answer, who am I? If we don't know our origin, in other words, we will not know our identity. Now, if we don't know our origin, where did I come from? And our identity, who am I? Then we will not know our purpose. Why am I here? Am I talking to somebody tonight? And if we don't know our origin, where did I come from? And our identity, who am I? And our purpose, why am I here? Then uh, sadly, we have a challenge with the question of destiny. Where am I going? So let's delve in these questions tonight. They are questions with, with eternal significance. The answer to any one of these must not be taken lightly. Where did I come from is the first question. This I say is about origin. You see, beloved, it is Foundational, Brother Wayne, to all other questions. If question number one is not answered, I am afraid that number two, three, and four, Sister Lawson, cannot be answered either. We need to understand, therefore, that the question of man's origin is a most important question that every person needs to answer tonight. And where better to get answers than the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, God's most trustworthy document. 
Open your Bible then with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis, the book of origins, the first book of the Bible. Genesis, we begin at the very beginning, chapter 1, and we begin at verse 1. And listen how Moses, under inspiration, penned the Genesis account of man's humanity's origin upon the earth. The Bible reads thus, in the beginning, come on and read with me now church, I want you to preach with me tonight, in the beginning whom? God, come on watch this now, let's examine carefully what's happening tonight, so God is the subject. Am I right? It is God who is doing something. Now what is God doing? Or what has God done? In the beginning, God what? Created the heaven and the earth. That's powerful. Is it not? Moses could have just said, in the beginning God. And that still would have told the story. For you see, nothing happens by chance. God is the designer, the divine designer. Of the heavens and the earth. Without him, nothing has been. And without him, nothing can be. In the beginning, God. It cuts away the foundation of atheism. And leaves it wanting. For atheism suggests that there is no God. But Genesis 1 verse 1 tells the universe there is a God. Am I talking to the church tonight? It absolutely smashes deism. D-E-I-S-M because you know there are some people who call themselves these. They, uh, that means that uh, they believe that yes, there is a creator, but this creator is not really integrally involved in sustaining the universe. So they say that God created Sister Barnett, but somehow he left the world on its own to survive. So they, they posit that the world is virtually like a clockwork system. Things happen but by chance and there is nobody giving order or giving direction or ordering the creation. But beloved, in the beginning God smashes that because uh, Genesis 1 verse 1 tells us that the God who made us is a loving God. For only a loving God could design a beautiful world like ours. Would you say amen? Beloved brothers and sisters, it cuts in pieces relativism and the, the doctrine of God is dead. You know that there are some people who say that truth is relative. There is nothing absolute. It may not be fully so. Uh, there, and we, we are not really sure. And then uh, the doctrine of God is dead was postulated by a gentleman named Frederick Nietzsche. He was the main proponent of the God is dead theory. I come to tell somebody tonight. 
My God is not dead. My God is alive. My God still sits on his throne. My God still remembers his own. I want to tell somebody, if Frederick Needs were alive, I would tell him God is not dead, but he's alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Did he not wake you up this morning? Did he not start you on your way? Did he not protect you when the devil wanted to kill you? Am I talking to somebody tonight? My God is not dead, but my God is alive. In the beginning, God, it cuts up the core of evolution. For even evolution dates back to time. Uh, but beloved, those four first words of the Bible, uh, they tell us that God is not bound by time. God is beyond time. God is in control of time. Time cannot contain my God. Only eternity. Oh, beloved, I wish I had language to give to you the word like I feel it in my bones. My God reigns from eternity past to eternity present to eternity to come. He has no beginning and he has no ending. He's God every time and all the time. In the beginning, God. But Genesis 1 verse 1 cuts up the very core of the Big Bang Theory. You see there is something called the Big Bang Theory. This Elder Johnson is a theory that assumes that the universe originated billions of years ago in an explosion from a single point of nearly infinite energy density. But even if that were so, there are still some questions, Sister Donna, left unanswered tonight. I'd like to ask the proponents of the Big Bang Theory, who is behind the explosion? Who banged the bang there has to be somebody and tonight the bible tells us that god is creator so god listen to me now god makes everything out of nothing listen to me tonight this is what theologians call ex nihilio. God makes everything out of nothing. Only God could do that. Huh? Now, 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 let's look at Verses 2 and 3. Look what happened now. What the Genesis account. Genesis 1, 2 and 3. And the earth was without form. Now, now let's describe that as formlessness. What's the word? Formlessness. The earth was without form. And what? Void. Now let's call void emptiness so, so Moses under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit tells the people that when God began to create the earth was formless and empty these are the two words the Genesis writer used the earth was formless and empty and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the next statement shakes me. The next statement makes me realize God is 
awesome. The Bible says in the midst of that darkness and in the midst of that chaos, the Spirit of God moved. And this is not an ordinary moving. This is a movement that it is doing something as the Spirit of God moves. Formlessness is giving way to what God is forming. And emptiness is giving way to what God is filling. My God is a mighty God. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. During creation week, God was doing two things. Where's quiz mistress? <laughs> God was destroying formlessness, one, and filling emptiness, two. Stay with me, church. God was destroying formlessness and filling emptiness. I want you to read the creation story when you go home tonight. On day one, God created light. But on day four, God filled light with sun, moon, and stars. And somebody asked, how come God created certain things before he created light? Let me tell you, my God is a consuming fire. Did you not hear Jesus say, I am the light of the world. On day one, God created light. And on day four, God filled light with sun, moon, and stars. On day two, God made the firmament in the midst to, to separate the waters above from the waters beneath. And on day five, God filled the firmament with birds in the air and fish. Can I say fishes now? Have they started to pluralize fish now to fishes? <laughs> he filled the firmament above with birds and the firmament below with fish. Are you seeing a parallel? Day one, God made light. Day four, God made sun, moon, and stars. Day two, God made the firmament. Day five, God filled the firmament with birds and fishes. On day three, God created dry land and vegetation. And on day six, God made animals, land animals, and humans. So day one of the creation week parallels day four. God created light on both days. Day two parallels day five. God dealt with the firmament on both days. And day three parallels day six. Because on day three, God made land and vegetation. And on day six, God filled the land with animals and humans. But I want you to know that the high point of God's creation is man, humanity. Because humanity was the first thing God had in his mind. But before God made us, he made a world to put us. What a mighty God we serve. God knew that we would have needs. And so he made a world that can take care of those needs. But I want you to look at something. Pastor RuPaul We'll preach this next week, but in, during the creation week, day one parallels day four, day two parallels day five, day three parallels day six. But there is no parallel to day number seven because day number seven is the high day of the creation week. That is why every Sabbath we come to church. 
to fellowship with one another and worship the creator for the devil beats us during the week. Do I have a witness in the house tonight? The devil baptizes us. So when we come to church, we come into the presence of God with joy in our hearts, with a song on our lips. Sometimes we come with our heavy burdens, but by the time we walk through the door, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. But, 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 I must go on. So God is creator. Question of origin. But notice that he calls everything into existence. But when it comes to the making of man, my God didn't just say, come man, come. But God meticulously, wonderfully, beautifully, symmetrically, got down, you know, as a preacher, you got to use your sanctified imagination. Nothing is wrong to be dramatic in preaching because even God himself is dramatic in, in how he communicates the word. So God gently got down. God began to do a work to form Adam. And as God formed man, the skeletal system was there. Imagine the gentle God. Imagine the loving God. He's not just forming man, but he's forming man in the image of God. And as God formed the body, the body laid there. But my living God got down closer and blew. <sighs> into his nostrils the breath of life and the bible says man became a living being somebody can i tell you you are not just anybody you are special the first question origin leads to the second who am i one writer says, when I think of how we came so far from glory, came to dwell among the lowly, such as I, or to suffer, Sister Brenda Lynn, to suffer shame and such disgrace on Mount Calvary, take my place. Then I ask myself, Sister Celia, this question, who am I? Who am I? Not I only have that question. For years ago, the psalmist David asked something similar. In Psalm 8, verses 1 and down to 6, the Bible says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Thou hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Because of thine enemies that thou mightest kill the enemy and the avenger. And then David says, listen to the word church. When I consider thy heavens. When last of you stop to consider God's heavens. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers. Am I talking to the church? Oh, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man? Who am I? Look at God's universe. Look at what God has done. When I consider how he makes the sea and grills it up in bars and doors and command it to come thus far and no further and the sea has to obey him. What is man? 
when he walks out on a boat in the sea of Galilee. And you see that storm that the disciples experienced on the sea of Galilee, it was Satan himself trying to get them. It was demons in the water trying to sink the boat with God's people. Because in the olden days in Greek mythology, they believed that demons lived in the mountains. Demons lived in the waters. That's where their power base was. And Jesus got on a turf that demons claimed control over. And in the midst of a storm, Jesus stood up, looked at the wind and the sea, and said, Peace, be still. The wind and the sea obeyed his voice. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Do you have some storm in your life tonight? Peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey his voice. Peace, peace, be still. Oh, church, what is man? Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Man, Pastor Jump. Is God's representative on this planet. Yeah, Sister Michael, humankind is God's image bearer. Genesis 1.26 tells us in no uncertain term that God made man in his own image. In the image of God made he him. Male and female created he them. We are God's image bearer. We are charged to care for the earth by bearing God's image. And that is why we are called stewards. A steward is somebody who partners with God. Take care. Because God, when he made us, he said, have dominion. Listen to this now. Man, and when I say man, man is generic term meaning both male and female. Man has mental and spiritual faculties. What did I say, church? Man has mental and spiritual faculties. We were created to communicate with God. That is why no matter how tough they play, when the days get weary and the long night dreary, there is always something in the heart that says, if only I can turn to God. That longing. Man has mental, spiritual faculties. Man has intelligence. We are intelligent beings. We can communicate with God. We can enter into relationship with God. Animals can do that. We are God's image bearers. Who am I? A child of the king. Made in the image of God. <laughs> we have capacity to relate to God. To create relationship with him. But the next question then is even more interesting. If we have identified origin and identity, then what's my purpose? Why am I here? Revelation chapter 4. What book did I say, church? Revelation in chapter 4 and verse 11. The Bible says, thou art what? Thou art worthy. Come on and say amen, church. Thou art worthy. Oh Lord, to receive what? Come on, come on. Watch these prerogatives that only God is worthy to receive. Thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. Oh God, help the preacher tonight. Help the preacher tonight. Isaiah 45 and verse 18. Why are we here? 
What's my purpose? Turn the pages of your Bible. Isaiah 45 verse 18. God gives you your purpose. He tells why he created this earth. For thus said the Lord that created the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it. Why? Why? To be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Oh church, the purpose of earth is that God made it so that we can inhabit it. It's a pity we treat God's earth and God's world like we do. We kill one another for land and house that we ourselves will one day have to leave. We cut down one another for property. The rich sometimes do it at the expense of the poor. I want to tell somebody that this is still my father's world. And though the wrong seems of so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king. Let the heavens ring. God reigns. Let the earth be glad. I may not live in a mansion down here. But if I'm faithful to Jesus. My mansion is waiting for me over yonder. It is not worth fighting for land. For a house of an earthly possession. It is worth fighting for your soul. Salvation. For we brought nothing into this world. And we surely shall take nothing out of it. Uh, just give me five more minutes to wrap this thing up. Uh, church. You see. Let me tell you. Some of the reasons. Why we should give God thanks. And stop behaving as though we are in charge. And stop behaving as though God is in charge. Look at the many reasons that make life possible on this planet. Number one, the position of the earth in relation to the sun. It is just at the right place. Number two, the presence of the moon which regulates the tide of oceans. It is just in the right place. Number three, the length of the path of the earth around the sun. Number four, a 24 hour turn of the earth on its axle. So we can have today and tomorrow and yesterday and the next day. Don't we serve a mighty God? Number five, the angle of the earth along its axle producing seasons is just about right. Spring and summer, autumn and winter. There is a God. There is a God. The next one, the presence of oxygen. Come on and say amen. Sometimes many die for lack of oxygen. But the presence of oxygen and nitrogen as well in the atmosphere, Sister Francis, it's in the right proportion. We don't have pure oxygen alone because our atmosphere would explode. 
liquid water that we drink that keeps us hygienic, healthy, and strong. Look at the wonders of my God's creation. Hello, church. More than four times every second. What did I say? More than four times every second. A new life leaves the darkness of one world to the light of another world. Can I talk to somebody? More than four times every second. Uh, listen to me, brothers and sisters. A baby is born. Oh, beloved, look at what is happening now. The human skeletal framework, 206 Bones make up the human skeletal framework and yet we stand on two feet. Who could have done that but God? The size of your heart is like the size of your fist. Less than a pound Yet every minute, because God is alive, it pumps five quarts of blood and oxygen to take care of your body. Approximately 1,800 quarts a day. What a God! Origin, identity, Purpose, destiny. Destiny, in Philippians chapter uh, 3. Uh, turn there with me, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, 2021, 20, the Bible says, For our conversation is in heaven. Yeah, our conversation is where? From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things. Mighty God. In 1 John 3. 1 to 3. John says. Behold. What manner of love. The father hath bestowed on us that we should be called the son of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Isn't it a privilege to be a child of God? Isn't it a privilege to be a daughter of God? Now are we the sons and daughters of God. And if you think you see anything yet, you haven't seen anything yet, for it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Aren't you anticipating? But, 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 but we know that when he shall appear, Jesus is coming again. Lift up the trumpet. Loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. When he shall appear. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Face to face shall I behold him. Far beyond the starry skies. Face to face in all his glory. I shall see him. I shall see him. I shall see him. I shall see him by and by. Let me tell you church. Let me tell you, church, tonight your past may be messy. Your present may be apprehensive. But the future is bright. My hope is in God. Jesus is my mainstay. The forward look is beating in my heart. I'm standing on hope. 
I'm singing hope. I'm living hope. I'm dreaming hope. My destiny is in the hands of God. People may not like me, but my Jesus is all right. You may do what you want to do with me. Talk what you want to talk against me. As long as God is on his throne, better days are coming by and by. My destiny is not in my job. My destiny is not in my friends. My destiny is not in my possession. My destiny is in G-O-D, God. The one who made me. The one who redeemed me. The one who is coming again. Many things about tomorrow. I don't see him to understand. But I know I know who holds tomorrow. And I know he holds my hands. I know he holds my hands. Origin, identity, purpose, destiny. We know where we came from. Pastor Jump, I'm going to ask you to pray tonight. And we know where we're going. I say to somebody, things are hard and times are tough. But stay with God. For better days are coming. Would you stand with me? Would you stand with me? How about you in the chat? Is there somebody tonight? You have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You want to say tonight, I've heard the word. I've heard about my origin, my identity, my purpose, and my destiny. And I want to make it right with God. If you're here, you've not yet accepted Jesus and you want me to pray for you, just raise your hand. Nobody should be looking around now. Just bow your heads and pray. Just bow your heads. Are you here tonight? Is there a visitor? You have heard the word tonight and you want me to pray for you that you accept Jesus. Would you raise your hand? Please, raise your hand for Jesus. Would you? Would you? Just raise your hand. Is there a visitor? Is there somebody in the chat? Is there somebody in the chat? Somebody in the chat. The decision card is in the chat. And uh, you... You know that God has done something for you. Just click that link right now. You may not have thought of accepting him tonight. But this is the night. This is the moment. This is the day. What you can do now. Don't put off until tomorrow. Is there somebody here? We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Is there somebody? Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Is there one in the house for Jesus tonight? Anybody? 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 Anybody in the chat? This is your time to fall in line with the divine. This is your time to give God your heart so that he can give you his father's kingdom. Pastor John, please come. Please come. Is there somebody? I don't know what's happening in the chat. God knows, and you know, you know, you know that it is your time to give Jesus your heart so that he gives you his father's kingdom.
first together church I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know Do you know who holds your hand tonight? heads together as we pray oh father in heaven we give you thanks and praise tonight because tonight dear God you have demonstrated to us and revealed to us through your man servant that indeed you are our creator and you aren't just the one who created this universe and left it to hurtle through space but you dear father care about our lives you care about our well-being. You care about our health. And you, dear Father, sent your man servant with power and with clarity tonight. And we thank you for your words of life and hope. Thank you, dear God, for Pastor Francis and the way in which he has pronounced your words and shown us tonight that indeed we have a purpose in this world. There are so many people tonight, dear God, who are going throughout their lives not understanding that we have been created by a God who loves us. Many of us, dear Father, don't understand that though human beings may forsake us, there is a God who will never leave us or forsake us. And he wants us to give our souls to him. Oh, Father, tonight we want to praise you. Because in you we have not only life today, but we have hope for a brighter tomorrow. Oh God, even in our dark moments, you are there to bring light. In our moments of thirst, you are there to bring water. In our moments of emptiness, you are there to fill us. So tonight, dear God, we put this series in your hands. And we ask that your divine Holy Spirit will attend the preaching of your words that men and women, boys and girls will run to your kingdom before it's eternally too late that men and women will see that in Jesus we have life in Jesus we have hope in Jesus we have eternal life as long as we depend on him for those dear God who are in the chat tonight who have committed themselves to you I ask that you will seal their decisions for time and for eternity for those dear father who did not raise their hands but in their hearts dear father they are deciding to follow you I ask that you will break those chains because there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain oh father we ask for a Pentecostal outpouring of your spirit that even as Pastor Francis and Pastor RuPaul preach your words, that Renovale Seventh-day Adventist Church and you too will be set on fire from on high. And when you shall come, may you find us faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night again. When the subject will be outnumbered, but not outdone. Thank you for coming. Walk good, safely. See you again. Members and visitors in the sanctuary and online, Sister Lawson, were your ears not opened? Was your heart not stirred as we listen to the man of God preach the word? Of course I was, and I have no doubt, based on what I saw in the chat, that everybody benefited significantly this evening from the message, God has 
just spoken. Amen. We have been able to answer the questions. Identity, listen to me now. The only banger that we need to talk about is the phones that we term bangers, right? <laughs> we, there's no banging where it comes on to creation, right, Celia? Or as Pastor put it, God bang the big bang. Amen, amen. So what did you learn? Well, we are created by a loving creator to be his child and his image bearer for the purpose of worship and fellowship with our maker who has purchased our salvation so we can live with him forever. Wonderful. We don't need anything else than that this evening, friends. So I'm going to tell you something. We heard yesterday, Super Sunday, and we kicked off with recognizing the Bible as the real document for this time. Amen. And tonight we answer the four questions. Tonight, Marvelous Monday. And therefore, tomorrow we're going to have what? Terrific Tuesday. You can't afford to miss it. So we are going to be inviting you to join us again tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. right here from the site, the physical site at 1 to 3 Chancellor Street, the Meadowvale Seventh-day Adventist Church, when we are going to be kicking up again the word of God to bring you the good news because we need Jesus we now. We need Jesus right now. And morning. don't forget, wonderful Wednesday. Yes, indeed. So we are inviting you again. We have seen where we have a number of new persons on YouTube and on Zoom, and we welcome you. Remember, like, subscribe, and share the link, because you can't afford to not share. Everyone needs Jesus now. No, more, more than, than ever. ever. So long, I am Yvonne Lawson. And I'm Celia Salmon. And until tomorrow, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Amen. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king.
Sunbeam Early Childhood Academy invites you to sponsor a child through our scholarship program. For just $3,000 a month for 10 months or less than a patty a day or less than a meal deal per week, you can support a child from one of our outreach communities today. To get involved, contact Elder Daphne Lawrence at 876-315-1746. That's 876-315-1746. Donate today and help our children rise. Financial struggles, high inflation, little pay. You ask yourself, how will I make it? How will my kids eat? How will I pay the rent? It just doesn't add up. You become doubtful. Does anyone care? Does God even care? Hold on. His promises are sure. He promised that if you remain faithful, He will never leave you or forsake you. One step is all it takes. Give your heart and your soul in full repentance. He came from heaven to earth to guarantee you victory. But you, you need Him now. You need Jesus now. The Jesus Now More Than Ever Gospel Series, May 15 to 29, 2022, presented by the Meadowvale Seventh Day Adventist Church. Well, having joined us for this beautiful meeting, Jesus Now More Than Ever, truly, God has been in this place. And we know it. As you go, go with the blessings you have received. And remember to tell somebody else about these beautiful meetings. Because we need Jesus now more than ever. God bless you. God be with you. And remember a watchword, Jesus now more than ever.